Hello, my name is Michael McCarthy and in this video we're going to take a look at using animation and animation layers in Autodesk 3ds Max CAD. Animation and animation layers is a very robust feature and we're going to take a little tour around what kind of options are there and where they become available. So let's just go into the create panel, choose helpers, and cat objects. We'll drag out a new cat parent. I'm going to use this alien preset. Just right click to stop creating. And with the cat rig selected, any part, a bone, or the parent, go over into the motion panel. Here's where we're going to see all the animation properties for our character. You can see that the layer manager is the first thing here and our little button to get in and out of setup and animation mode is here. Now there are a couple of different things and different types of layers that we can add. So if we go down here you'll see that we have an absolute layer, a local adjustment layer, a world adjustment layer, and the cap motion layer. We've played with a few of these before but we're going to take a look at what each one does. So the first thing you need to do is add any sort of animation layer to be animating with cat. After that you want to get into animation mode. Now when you go into auto key or choose to set keys you'll be making keys for your character. So we can just go and go to a frame and move the legs or the head of the character. You can see that this sets keys and as long as we're in an animation mode, we'll be able to set those keys. When we're in setup mode, it'll go back to the setup phase. So the two things we really need is some sort of animation layer and to be in animation mode, to be animating with our cat rig. Now we can go through and animate just as we would any other rig in 3ds Max. So maybe I'll take this arm and move it up slightly and rotate the hand. and a few keyframes after that to kind of move it back behind the head. Now because this is a layering system we have a lot more flexibility than just doing straightforward or pose to pose animation. So we can add more layers and blend between them and do all sorts of cool stuff like that. So let's look at how we do that. Uh, to add a new layer there's a couple of different ways that you can do it. Um, if you just have the current layer selected and you add a new layer it's going to add that new layer behind it. So normally what you want to do is make sure that you click on available and add your new layer there and that way it's going to add the layer in front of the layer that you've been working with which is usually what you want to do. Now when you're adding another layer this is where it tends to become a little bit more tricky and best practices are usually good to have. So let's just delete this layer that I just created and make sure that we name our current layer. So to name a layer, just select on its name there and replace it. So we're going to call this base and then we'll click on available and add another absolute layer. Now here's where we're going to see how absolute layers behave and how they are solid in their form. So when we add a layer on top of the base layer, so I'm just going to call this hand out it completely replaces the animation from the layer below it. Okay, And this is how the stack kind of works with the layer ordering. This is the first to get evaluated and this is the next to get evaluated. So if you have an absolute layer on top of the base layer here, then this is going to take over all of that animation. So if we scrub, we'll see that we don't have any of that animation that we had before. Um, you will see that it kind of defaults and starts its pose from where in the timeline you added your animation layer. So it's important to think about that when you do add your layer. Let's just delete this layer again and we'll see that. So if we scrub all the way to 45 and we add another absolute layer, then you can see that we get this pose with the leg out, the head turn, so on and so forth. And if I just undo that and we are at frame zero, we click on available and add our absolute layer, then we get this static pose for our absolute layer there. So it just kind of depends on what you want your pose and what you want to be in that layer, whether you want to continue on where from where you left off 
or whatnot. But it's just good to know that that's how it reacts. So when you're adding your layers, you don't run into confusion and trouble. Okay, so now that we have this layer, I will name it hand out. And we'll just take the left hand and move it out as if it was going to shake someone's hand. So there's our animation for that layer. Now to blend between these layers, uh, we can do that with our global and local weighting. We'll take a look at global weighting here first. So you can see that this layer is on top of the base layer. And if we take this global weight spinner and just spin it down, it will kind of blend between them. So you can see the percentage adjust. And you can see that the animation from the base layer is kind of showing through. And you can have this set to many different percentages and blend through them so that you can have only half of one and half of the other or whatever your animation needs. You can also easily animate the blend between these layers. So let's just set this handout layer to zero and we'll do our little pose here with the hand behind and we'll set a keyframe just turning on auto key and setting that first hold keyframe to zero and then at frame 50 we'll blend out to the layer with the hand out. So what you'll see is the entire pose is taken into consideration. The arm goes down, the foot goes back, and this hand goes out. So now between these two places we have that blending happening. Okay, And it's going back to the base layer so then we can go to maybe frame 70 and just blend back to that base layer. Now you have full control over this blend value and how it works via the curve editor. So you can click on the curves for this and any keys that we've made with the handout layer you can just kinda go in here and start to adjust their timing and their value. The other nice thing about blending is that you can choose to see what is getting blended into what in a very visual way and the way that you do that is just by clicking on this flyout and choosing the color by layer. Right now we're coloring the rig by whatever colors it was created with by default, but then we can actually color it by the layers that are getting blended and used. So you can see here that this layer color is blue and this layer color is kind of a purple. We'll make it something a little more defined like a really bright yellow. So when the animation is 100% the base layer, the rig is going to look yellow, but as it blends, to 100% the handout layer or the blue layer, then the rig is going to turn blue. This is a really nice indication to show you what layers are in effect really quickly in the viewport and I recommend using it when you're working with the layers. The other nice thing is it actually smoothly blends so you can kind of see that it's kind of 50% here and going towards from blue to yellow in the viewport. So that's a little bit about just setting up our base layers adding in a couple of different layers and blending between them for basic layer animation and some of the tools that you have to use. Uh, next we're going to go a little bit into the local weights and some more detail about using the layers and adjusting them to your needs.